Just a couple of examples in um, this lesson. So, in the real exam, if you are asked a volume of revolution question, it is likely to be in some kind of context. Um, so they'll come up with weird and wonderful shapes. You might have to add volumes together. You might have to subtract volumes from each other. Um, various different bits and pieces. They sometimes mix it together with other topics as well. Um, so they can, you know, on the face of it, volume of revolution is not that hard because it's just a simple formula to learn. But they can add other bits and layers into it and stuff. Okay. Um, an important thing to look out for is if you need to give units with your answer, occasionally there will be unit conversions as well. Uh, so just look out for those because there will be marks for those on the mark scheme. Now, I want to change this example one ever so slightly just to make a point. So, um, instead of the equation being this, I want it to be y equals. Okay, so instead of the equation that's in the um, question, which is a bit spoilery, um, I'm going to change it back to the original y equals. Okay, so they'd rearrange to make x subject, but I'm going to change it back to the original y equals. So I've got 25 minus 10x plus x squared, or obviously put the x squared first. Okay. So this diagram shows a vase. It tells us the base of the vase is 10 centimetres, so it's 5 centimetres kind of radius at the bottom. It's got a height of 20 centimetres, it's all marked on the diagram. The edge of this vase is modelled by the equation that I've just replaced in here. And it says it's formed by rotating the shapes 360 degrees about the y-axis. So we are going to need x squared to be the sub or x to be the subject of this. But first off, it asks us to use the model to estimate the capacity of the vase. So we know we're going to do a volume of revolution. Now, the reason I've changed it back to the original one here is because we need to rearrange this, and sometimes you might do this, you might have to rearrange it to make x the subject. If you've got a quadratic and you're rearranging to make x the subject, you're going to complete the square on this, which in this case, it does just factorise to the squares. It won't always, but we complete the square on this, and then we're going to make x the subject. Okay, so we're going to square root both sides. And add the five. Okay, simple enough so far. Now the point I want to make is um, what it's tempting to do in this case is to just pick the positive out of the plus or minus. We don't need both of them, we just need one of them because we've only got one kind of part of the graph that we want. But looking at the diagram here, this just this part, I'm not bothered about the left hand part, I just want that one. Looking at this one here, It's the left half of your quadratic. Okay, so your original quadratic goes up like that ish, not like that. Um, and we've taken the left half. Now, because we've taken the left half of that, that means we want the 5 minus root y. Obviously, that's the one that's given to you in the question, but I wanted to make a point. If you have to do it yourself from scratch, sometimes you come down to a choice between the plus or minus. Look at your diagram and see. If you want the right half, you choose the plus root y. If you want the left half, you choose the minus root y. Okay? Right, let's get on with the actual question. So, it's asked us to... Uh, estimate the capacity of the vase. So we're doing a volume of revolution. We're doing it around the y-axis, so it's dy, so pi uh, times the integral of x squared dy. Uh, x is 5 minus root y, so we put that in. Don't forget to square it. And our limits of integration are going to be our y values, not our x values. So our y goes between 0 and 20 at the top. Those are our limits on that. Be really careful. It's easy to get mixed up with your x and y's. Let's expand it out, this out. It's not linear inside the bracket, so you can't reverse chain rule it anyway. So expand this out using 25 minus 10 root y. 
plus y dy. All right, root y is a half, y to the half. And then we can do this integration. So 25 goes to 25y. Uh, 25 y to the half, you add 1 to the power and divide by the new power. Give you minus 20 over 3 y to the 3 over 2. Integrating y goes to a half y squared. And you can see just subbing the limits in and working out your calculator. Do show the substitution, just make sure you get all the marks. I'm not going to show the zero substitution because I know it's going to be zero. But show the 20 substitution and then work this out in your calculator. Get to times it by pi at the end as well. You could have put the tan pi up there. So three two five. Three. I'm just going to double check what the question said. So it just said use the model to estimate the capacity of the bars. It didn't say anything about the accuracy of my answer. As long as you're sensible, it's fine. We do want units as well, so the units are in centimeters. So I'm going to give this as three two six centimeters cubed for the volume. Any sensible degree of accuracy is fine for this. The next bit then says the vase is initially filled to a height of 10 centimeters. So filled halfway. When the flowers are placed in the vase, 50 centimeters cubed of water is displaced. Determine whether the vase will no, overflow. So what I want to work out is the volume of this top bit here, and then compare it to 50 centimeters cubed. If it's bigger than 50 centimeters cubed, we're fine. 50 centimeters cubed can fit in there, no problem. Um, if it's smaller, then we've got a problem because it's going to over overflow. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing as before. I'm going to. Um, But instead, I'm going to use the limits of 10 and 20 instead of um, 0 and 20. You could alternatively um, work out this bottom bit and take it away from the volume that we worked out before. That's fine as well. So I'm going to find the volume of the top bit going between 10 and 20 of x and y. Now we've done most of the work already. Because um, we've done the integration and stuff, so I don't need to do all that again. Um, I'm just going to go down to writing out the integrated bit. 25 mat But this time we're going between 10 and 20. I am going to show the substitution even though I know what that value is. So sub it in 20. Subbing in 10 as well. So that's still 20 over 3. And then I'm going to work this volume out. Now we've got some of it already. Uh, so if I just do this. Now. This is subbing in 20, I can take away subbing in 10. So, and minus 25. That's 10. Minus 20 over 3. 10 to 32. Plus. Uh, 
So you 14.5 and then times that by pi. 45.659. We worked out that the top of that vase is 46 centimetres cubed. If you displace 50 centimetres cubed, that's going to overflow. That's 50. Bigger than 46. The vase will Any questions about this? Last example then, so this one, circular spinning top made of out of wood, uh, width of 18 centimetres, which is marked in the diagram, and it's um, the cross section shown here. Uh, this is formed with two equations, so we've got a straight line on the top, so y equals 2x plus 18 is this one over here, and we've got y squared equals 4x plus 9 on the bottom bit. Um, the cross-section cross rotated around the y-axis. Find the total volume of wood in the spinning top. So we're going to do two volumes here and add them together. We're going to do the top one and the bottom one. Actually, we only need like half of the curve. You'll need like this bit and this bit. Okay. Um, Let's do the top bit first. So you've got options for the top bit because it's a straight line. Either you can integrate it as normal. Uh, you would use your, um, we'd have to work out the height of this here. Well, it's not too hard to work out that that's 18. Uh, and use your limit to rotate around that. Alternatively, you can do it as a volume of a cone, which is what I'm going to do. To first one. So first volume is volume of a cone. Uh, which is a third pi r squared h. Radius of this is half of that 18 uh, width. So that's 9, so a third pi times 9 squared times the height of this cone, which is 18. So if you stick x is 0 and you get the y, so it's 18. Uh, and if we work this out, we'll do it in terms of pi. So it's third. Nine squared. Eighteen. Four eight six. Okay, you could integrate it, and that would have been fine. We get some answer. The second volume underneath the x-axis. Um, we are rotating around the y-axis. So we're doing pi times the integral of x squared dy. And I also need my y values for my limits. So first thing I'm going to do, work out what limits I'm using. I'm using zero for my upper limit, because it goes up to the x-axis. I need to know where it crosses the y-axis um, for my lower limit. So if I set x equals zero in here, I get y squared is 36. I get y is plus or minus 6. Obviously, this one's a negative one, so my lower limit's minus 6. What I also need to do is to rearrange this to make x the subject, because I'm doing x squared dy. So if I um, get x the subject, so divide by 4 and minus the 9, I can then um, substitute that in. I'm actually going to put this as a single fraction, because I think it'll be a little bit easier. Either is fine. We'll get some answer. Now we're in a position to be subbing stuff in. So b is integral between minus 6 and 0, y squared minus 36 over 4. Um, again, not linear inside the brackets, so I can't reverse chain rule. Got to expand it out. So if I square the 4 on the bottom, I get 16, and I've taken that out to the front. On the inside, I get y to the 4 
minus 72y squared. I don't know what 36 squared is off the top of my head. 1, 2, 9, 6. I've expanded that out. We'll integrate it now. to the 5 uh, minus 24y cubed plus 1, 2, minus 6. Or so. 0, minus 6. So if you limit it in, so I know when I sub 0 in, I'll get 0, so I'm just going to write 0. Sub in minus 6. Calculator zero minus minus six minus five so not minus five plus five uh, minus twenty four times minus six cubed plus one two. for the total volume to add these two together. Because this is in context, um, this one just asks you to find the total volume of the water, so you might um, get away with that, that'll be fine. I'm going to give it a decimal, but I do need units with my final answer. So as a decimal, that's 2, 3, 4, 1, 1, centimetres cubed. 2, 3, 4, 1, 1. 